Hi everyone. So today we are going to discuss about uh, how to import AI and YCS from third party application or legacy application to Fission receivable application. So in order to do this activity, so we should have three required setups. Those things you can call as uh, transaction type and uh, transaction source and customers. So transaction source, nothing but as a legacy application, which uh, uh, the client is, is, uh, is going to be uh, uh, using the application and type, uh, let's say example invoices likewise, and customers, which are the customers we are going to uh, create a transactions against each individual customers. And the process, the process, uh, it is very like, you know, seamless process uh, in Oracle Cloud, uh, which they had given us. So here initially, we should go and download a uh, ability template in Oracle repository, uh, but first we spec import auto invoice program and uh, update mandatory fields. So likewise, uh, business unit, transaction source type, and then invoice details and customer details. These are the things we need to update it and uh, generate G, uh, GIF file uh, in CSA format, comma separate values, and upload this GIF file into ECM server. Once we upload, GIF file to ECM server. So the below two jobs needs to be run. One is load interface file for import and then import auto inverse program. These are the two ESR jobs we should run subsequently in order to create or import invoice for specific transaction source. So this is the whole history of the how to import AR inverse by using legacy application. So let's get into a BD template. So the already I did download a BD template and I already populated the required information in the ABD format. So ABD format content has five sheets. One is new sections and then CSU generation and RE interface line solve and uh, distribution solves and uh, sales credit likewise. So these four plus one total five sheets will be available. So for demo purpose, I have built data only, uh, lines only, which you can uh, see here. So here, if you see what are the fields are mandatory to update. So business unit, transaction source name, and transaction type, payment terms. So these are the basic information which we need to populate in the ability template. Wherever you see star symbol, those things are mandatory fields. And also how to get so if you go and place the cursor on the specific column, the comment will display. So what exactly this field will do, right? So likewise, if you see here, batch so, uh, transaction source. So where should I go and get the transaction source of the import of the legacy applications? So this is the navigation part already is given. So now we get to set up and maintenance and uh, task name is manage transaction source and uh, source type is the imported and then like from there you can get the which source you want to use for the import invoices likewise you can see transaction type as well as okay so once you provided all the information here so i will tell you here the key things here build to customer account number and the customer site number these two we supposed to provide in order to identify the customer in the application and transaction type line type so here Ideally, we should have the list of values where you can select line, tax, freight, and charges. Accordingly, you can choose it up. And uh, transaction line description, which description you want to capture over here. And currency code and the currency conversion rate and date, date of the conversion and total value of the that particular line. So here, the significant of the column is AL column in the BDA, line transaction flexible context value. So this will be represented about the, the uh, descriptive flexible values, okay? So which already I created a DFA value at the line level. This is the one. And I have given the segment, uh, I mean, this is like, you know, line attribute one and line attribute two. These two already I populated over here as per the my setup. So these are the information is enough to create an invoice, okay? So just summary of this discussion here. Once we download a BD template from Oracle repository, 
So we need to delete all the unnecessary information in the files and then populate only which data is required for you to import. So here in the real time, when you're working with the clients, just keep in mind, it says that like you know, the specific business unit which you are using it and then uh, transaction source. So if you don't go and look at your uh, setup and maintenance, it won't be like this transaction batch source name is supposed to be looks like as a mayonnaise transaction source. Similarly, mayonnaise transaction type names likewise will be there. So here the source name will be represent which we are going to importing here invoices from the out of Oracle. It's nothing but legacy application and type invoice credit memo debit memo likewise. So likewise you can see here and then a bill to and ship to site number these are the mandatory things you can provide it to so how these things will help to business uh, here right so here the moment when you given customer account number and site number it will represent about your customer details in the application while importing these lines that is how it is okay and then choose the appropriate interface line context value and uh, attribute ones too and also so we have a flexibility to capture additional information of the sales orders or invoice information based on the customer requirement up to 15 attributes up to 15 attributes will be available here if you look at so if you see here 9 10 11 12 13 14 so till here we can capture all of them that is sufficient for us to capture all the respective uh, information at the line level okay so and then I want to add another conversation here. So 24C onwards, they added these additional features. 24, I think so, 24B onwards. They are given this many additional columns where you can use for the to capture additional information of the of the any of the information. Let's say example your uh, uh, sales orders or your uh, uh, customer review information or like you know, transactions information, whatever you want that we can capture here and additionally uh, i would add one more point here these things will be supporting for us there is a new feature introduced by oracle 24p that is customer pay, uh, customer prepayment invoice for that you should use these additional fields that we'll discuss in separate uh, discussion so this is how like you know, we should fill the data in the everyday format once we populate it over here this will go here click on generate csv file so already i did generate the csv file here if you look at so this is the generated csv file so now so what can be done so as part of the process we did generate the uh, csv file and uh, here upload into ucm server so how to add this into ucm server go here file import and export so here you can search for that or if you want to add it you can add it over here since already i added here so what i can say just I can go and call out that specific one here. Let's see whether it will be available or not. Pin receivable import. It will give us what are the files we imported under this account. So here notice it just before this call, uh, like you know, I did uh yeah, yeah, here you can see I did that. So AR auto invoice import. Okay, so this particular process id i will tell you what is the significant of this process id so the moment when you upload the data file here uh, into the ecm server you should not be able to identify this particular process id the moment when you run the esr job called as a load interface file for import once the process got completed the space the same process id will be populated over here under the process id it means that this particular file, which is the UCM server, it moved from UCM server to 
your interface table. That is what it is meaning of the this process ID. If it is blank here, then it may, it means that like you know the file is available in the using server and yet to be processed into Fusion application. That is what meaning of the blank. Okay, so then we should go schedule process. So here notice it. So I ran import Arduino's program. So it got triggered. Child, yes, a job called as a import auto invoice execution report. So what is the execution report you say is about it? This is nothing but as a report. Your report in say it means that you should have all the information about the the process what we had done the previously, right? So here, if you go and click on that, it will give us clear information about the summary of the process. If you want to see the output file, you can go and click on republish and get the file into the output into your uh, ABD, uh, sorry, uh, PDF or uh, Excel sheet or CSU format. But if you want to quickly, you can see that information, just go and click on here. If you go and just click, drag it till down, okay. This is the summary, okay. It will tell us, says that like, you know, what is the transaction source which we used? And uh, what is the default date and all the information which are given in the when you import the program? And here I notice it interface lines selected four lines got selected and uh, successfully processed three and rejected is one. So here this summary will say that clearly to us how many invoices that we processed, how many got imported, how many got like rejected. So by seeing this number, we can understand it and then come down. So we can see that which got imported in detail level and which got not uh, I mean, rejected. Those things also we can see in detail level of the error message in the down. So this is the one we're saying out. Easy solution as a customer name and uh, invoice. So description, all of them. And error message says that like each line must have unique combination of the interface line attribute 1 to 15 and interface lines context value for the line transaction field. Okay. So this is how like we can understand that if there any of the errors over the the run what we have run uh, run from import programs okay so this is how and now just go here home page and go to billing and that scroll down in my section there is a one Info tile called as a import exceptions. If you go and click on here, it will clearly indicate that how many invoices got stuck in the each source. You can see transaction sources that these multiple things are there. And if you want to see what is the reason for that not to import it, go and look at here number of exceptions. Let's say example today's date, this one, assume it. Just go and click on here. It will get downloaded as a AD FDA template uh, where you can go and correct the data. Once you correct it, then again, like, you, know, you can import, uh, like run the import program to load this invoice into the application. Now, since already I did download this particular invoice, which is there available, I'll show you that. So this is the source of that and the business unit customer. Just go to task panel, click on uh, manage transactions and uh, transaction date would be today's date. Click on search. Yes, two got imported, but I am referring. Uh, I am referring the first one as per the our ABD template. Just click on that. Yes. See, just keep in mind one very very key uh, important point is that when you create invoice, when we create invoice from the UI, I mean the front end, the status always like in progress or incomplete, right? So, but when you import invoice. By using any of the third party application, the status will be always looks like as a complete. So that is the only difference between import and create invoice manually at the front end. So now we can see that I did not make any changes at all. It is showing as a complete. Okay. And here the payment terms. So when you see this kind of payment terms in the application, it means that net 30 is the actual payment terms and then 10 or uh, 2 by 10. It means if the customer is going to make a payment within 10 days or 10 within or before 10 
then the the particular customer should get two percent additionally discount on the invoice. So that is what it is of the meaning. And DFF values which we have given. So click on the details. Here notice it. Contest value twenty four D DFF AR and year invoice and year customer ID number. So these things where I have given here. The ABD template I have given it as a interface line context value and then attribute one attribute two. So here AL column, AM column, and AN column. So these two three fields got imported here. Unless the reference you can see 123 got captured over here. This number, year invoice number. So this is how we can see the you can you should use DFA values while importing the invoices. So just say cancel here. This is the line level DFF which we created. If you want to see the header level information of the DFF, just click on show more and then miscellaneous. And here you can notice it, contest value is there. If they if already created enabled, then that will be populated over here. So this is how we can see the header level DFA values. Now, scroll down here, details, you can already have shown that here, okay. So this is how we can import AR invoice from the third party application. Then after the normal way, the way, uh, what you used to do, just go to the action tab here, then keep it as a account in draft. So it will take a while because it will get valid all the fields. So header level, line level, all the values are matching or not matching. Then once all the validations are passing through, then like, you know, it will get validated and then transfer the data to accounting fields. Now there is some issue accounting, so that's okay, fine. But ultimately our, our intention is that how to import AR invoices. So now we can see here balances. If you want to see the balance of the this customer of this particular invoice, just go and click on view balances. See here, original amount is 300 and the tax line is that $15.9, totally 315. If you go and create a receipt and apply once apply the receipt here, it will get it will get like you know capture here and total balance will get nullified. So it means that there is no need do for this customer in this fashion. So why the account is not generated? There is some like, since we are using demo instance, there could be possible like, people made a lot of changes like you know, here and there. So that's where it is not working here. I will check that later. Okay, so this is how we can import invoice. Yep. So this is the like, you know, total, the process of the, how to import AR invoice from the legacy application. Thanks for watching my video. Please do subscribe and share and like. Thank you.